Daylight savings time, that time of year where we lose an hour of sleep in the spring to get it back in the fall. Whenever it begins or ends, we set our clocks forward or backward by one hour, and in many cases, we use the opportunity to make sure they're synchronized, because they tend to fall a couple of minutes ahead or behind as the year progresses. Some clocks can adjust or even synchronize themselves automatically. Others may require a little extra help from a human. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to reliably set, adjust, and synchronize various types of clocks. Then we'll take a look at the origins and future of daylight savings time itself. Microwaves and other household appliances with clocks typically need to be set manually. We can set this one by pressing clock, entering the current time on the number pad, and pressing start once our cell phone changes to the desired time. Speaking of our cell phone, cell phones, computers, tablets, and most other internet-connected devices set themselves manually. All you have to do is make sure your correct time zone is selected in the device settings. Most computers use an NTP time server to set themselves. NTP stands for Network Time Protocol, and it's one of the oldest internet protocols in use today. Since most secure connections like HTTPS rely on an accurate system time to function properly, NTP has very little, if any, security. Luckily, all it's doing is telling you the time, so there's nothing interesting there for a hacker to spy on. Cell phones, on the other hand, use NITZ where available. NITZ stands for Network Identity and Time Zone, and it's offered complementary by most mobile service providers via their cell towers. In the United States, carriers are required to allow cell phones to dial 911 whenever feasible, even if the customer does not have an active service plan. Since cell phones also rely on an accurate system time to work properly, your phone can set its clock via NITZ even without an active service plan. This radio can set its clock via RDS. RDS stands for Radio Data System, a free, over-the-air metadata service offered on the sidebands of most FM radio stations. This service transmits a variety of text-based information, including the current time. When listening to the radio in your car, you might have seen the title of the current song on screen. If you have, you've seen RDS in action. By simply tuning to your nearest NPR station for less than one minute, we'll see the clock set itself automatically. Unfortunately, most in-dash entertainment systems cannot set their clocks via RDS. These must be set manually by the car owner, and it can be difficult to find the correct setting to adjust. Since most recent cars have the ability to receive RDS signals and display radio text, it would make sense for them to set their clocks via RDS as well. Unfortunately, most are incapable of doing so, which is why next year I'm going to leave mine on standard time. This clock is commonly known as an atomic clock. I keep it on my bedside table because of its large, easy-to-read display, but tonight I'll be putting it outside. Why am I doing this? Well, the actual atomic clock, which will only lose one second every 50 billion years, is located at the National Institute of Standards and Technologies campus in Fort Collins, Colorado. The NIST broadcasts a time signal on shortwave radio, which is then received by this clock. That's why the technical term for this kind of clock is a radio clock. Because of the way this building is designed and where it's located, the clock can only pick up the time signal in the dead of night, with no walls around to muffle the signal and no inclement weather between clock and station. We don't often think of VCRs as advanced gadgets nowadays, but for their time, they were. Many later VCRs, including this one, could set themselves via XDS. XDS stands for Extended Data Service, a similar service to RDS offered in the vertical blanking interval of television stations. All you had to do was make sure your VCR was connected to a TV antenna, set the clock mode to auto, and set the number of your local PBS station in your VCR settings. When the VCR was powered off, the word auto or aught would flash on the screen for a minute or two as the VCR attempted to lock on to the XDS time signal. 
Unfortunately, the vertical blanking interval, where XDS was located, was unique to analog television signals. Once analog TV disappeared from the airwaves, so did XDS. So if your VCR flashes auto or aught on its front panel display, you can reasonably assume that whatever appears next will not be the current time. Do you see that clock? It's midnight. That's a VCR, kid. Not even I. Chronos, master of all time, can set one of those things. One thing that's even more difficult than setting a VCR clock is figuring out why daylight savings time still exists. According to just about every teacher I've ever had, daylight savings time was invented by Benjamin Franklin for the benefit of farmers. That is not true. Daylight savings time as we know it today was actually invented by George Hudson in 1895. He wanted to collect insects after he finished work, and he needed more daylight in the evenings to do so. Daylight savings time wouldn't make it to the United States until 1918. It was proposed and adopted as a wartime measure to conserve energy. Back then, electric lights consumed over six times more energy than they do today, so daylight in the evenings was crucial to ensuring our power grid didn't get overloaded. So basically, it's another one of those temporary measures that took a little too long to go away. In fact, one source indicated that daylight savings time causes heating and air conditioning to run longer, consuming more energy in the process. Other experts indicate that the semi-annual disruption in our sleep cycles could be hazardous to our health. Sunlight causes our bodies to produce hormones that promote alertness, and alertness means not sleeping. After the sun sets, our bodies produce hormones that make us sleepy. If the sun sets later in the day, that could cause us to sleep less overall. Remember, we still have to get up at the same time of every workday, regardless of whether we're on daylight savings time or standard time. Studies indicate that a chronic reduction in sleep puts us at higher risk for obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and certain types of cancer. Studies further indicate that areas where people tend to get less sleep have a lower per capita income and higher health care costs than areas where people tend to get more sleep. Every year, people talk about how we should end this spring forward fall back routine for good. And every year, nothing happens. This year, we should make it a priority to permanently end daylight savings time in the United States. Look up your Congress people on the internet and send them emails urging them to end DST in the USA. After you do that, come on back here and hit the subscribe button down below. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.